I'm Teresa and I'm the author of Hook, Loop and Lock. It's a fully illustrated book and an introduction to locker hooking. And this is a first new series of videos where we are going to get you started locker hooking. This first video, we're going to talk about all of the essentials, everything you need. And you can find all of these items on my website, colorcrazy.com. The first item is a locker hook, and a locker hook looks very much like a crochet hook with a hook on one end and a needle eye at the other end. And locker hooks are available in two different materials. There's the aluminum, and then there's also the steel locker hook. This is a much heavier hook, and I really prefer the aluminum. It's much uh, lighter and, and easier to use, but you may prefer the steel. The next item that you're going to need is a canvas. And you can find canvas uh, today in, in two different sizes. This is the traditional rug hooking canvas. And you can also get it in this finer five mesh size. And it's basically five squares per inch. You can get a lot more detail out of this one. You'll also need a good pair of craft scissors, some fine uh, scissors that, that can cut precisely, and a strong pair of um, sturdier scissors. And in addition to that, you might want to pick up some markers, some color markers. I like these Sharpies, and you can use them to mark your design if you're doing something a little more detailed uh, right on your canvas. Uh, you're also going to need some locking medium, and traditionally, uh, cotton twine has been used, and you can use cotton twine, but for a lot of the, the rich colors that you might be choosing to use, it's really best to use a dark locking medium behind your design so that it doesn't really show through. It kind of hides in the background. So now we've talked about all of the tools and the supplies that you need, um, and now we're going to talk about the different kinds of materials you can use to lock or hook. Um, traditionally, wool has been used in its various uh, forms, unspun and spun with different fibers or spun into yarn. But you can also use fabric. And here I have some fabric strips that have been pre-cut. These are also available on my website. Um, and they come in really vibrant colors, so you can do some really fun things with these fabric strips. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that for the five mesh size, you're going to need a fabric stri strip that is basically a half inch in width. And for the 3.75 mesh size, you need something a little wider, maybe three quarters of an inch or even a full inch depending on the weight of the fabric. Something like these uh, beautiful silk fabric strips that come in various widths from a half inch to three quarter inch to an inch wide. And they work uh, really well on the 3.75 and the five mesh canvas as well. And they're available on my website. This, for example, was made with those silk strips. It's a wine carrier with uh, some beaded ends, and uh, it's really beautiful and vibrant with those fabric strips. There's also all sorts of other materials you can use, different kinds of novelty yarns, like this fuzzy um, yarn here. And you can make something really fun, like this little basket. This was made using cotton fabric strips and, and this wonderful novelty yarn. And it also has some lovely accents here made out of felt. You can also combine different fibers. You can use ribbons and wool and fabric strips and uh, different types of ribbons or even this, this really nifty seam binding here and make something really lovely like this journal cover. This is made with a, a variety of different fibers and yarn as well and it comes out really nice. A good way to get started is with this trivet kit uh, made with fabric strips and an inset tile piece. It's available on the website, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make one.